various weaponry strategically placed around the office. I saved For nine the seasons, Rain Wilson played Dunder Mifflin's resident beat farmer on the hit TV comedy say, The Office. Oh, but his journey to becoming a three-time Emmy nominee began as a self-proclaimed nerdy bassoonist. It's all chronicled in his memoir, aptly named The Bassoon King, My Life in Art, Faith, and Idiocy. Rain joins us now in studio. It's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Marcy. And you look halfway normal. <laughs> uh, thank you. Is that a, is that a compliment? I do. I'm, I am halfway normal. Yes, halfway. Halfway, but not, not all, all the way. way. No. Tell me about the title of this and, and Bassoon King and, and the way you describe yourself as, as nerdy throughout the, growing up. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this journey through high school and, and the bassoon and everything else. Well, uh, the Bassoon King, I don't know, it's kind of a catchy title. I played the bassoon for six years in, uh, in junior high school and, and high school. My, I kind of got full. I wanted to play the saxophone, but my, uh, my uh, junior high music teacher, he conned me. He's like, you know, we got too many saxophonists, but there's this really cool instrument you should play. It's awesome. That's it's a full-on con job. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I'll do it. And he's like, the bassoon, <laughs> which is just the geekiest, worst <laughs> instrument. It takes an hour to assemble, and you have to sit on a strap, and it sounds like a, a dying yak. You know, you, you blow into it. It's like, <laughs> and um, so I, I kind of, it's a kind of a symbol of. Uh, of my awkward childhood, so I thought it would be good for the title. I want to read something, and, and I'll, I'll call it What's in a Name. And this is what you wrote about being named Rain and, and what you had to go through, okay, okay. in, in school. Right. So here's what you say. I was repeatedly mocked, derided, shoved, punched, laughed at by a good majority of the people I was in school with in Seattle. Certainly having the name Rain didn't help much. I would sometimes dream longingly of being named Gary, or Doug, or Carl, <laughs> strong, simple names that didn't draw much attention. I heard rain, rain, go away, chants of the way through elementary school. All that rain <laughs> stuff. T tell me yeah. about those times. Well, it's funny. I, a, one of the things I talk about a lot in the book, I mean, it, it covers my whole life, including time on the office and yeah. struggles as an actor in my marriage, et cetera. But, uh, one of the main things I talk about is like growing up geeky, growing up a nerd was a, just a very different experience in the 70s. Like you were, there weren't any nerd symbols. There wasn't a Bill Gates, you know, there weren't Because now nerds are cool. Yeah, nerds are cool and people respect them and there's whole conferences and Hollywood pitches movies to them and they have podcasts and TV shows. You know, Big Bang Theory is the most popular show in the world. And, um, but back in the 70s, you, you really were kind of like, beat up and it was kind of your lot in life you know when you were like that so but that was part of my transition was I'm really grateful for that because I just I learned so much and I hung out with my nerdy friends and then I kind of became a drama nerd and just i am always been kind of an outsider and it was kind of me this book chronicles me finding my way in my place in the yeah. world. Yeah and outsiders and outliers are very good things. Yeah. But yeah they are. Dwight writes the foreword to this book. He does. Yeah. yeah. And that was an interesting thing to do. Yeah, and he hates the book, which is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was really happy to bring Dwight into it. Um, and it was just a funny idea that I had that uh, Dwight would hate this book and, uh, and write a really nasty introduction. Said it. he was randomly chosen to write it. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun to kind of revisit the character from through a different lens and have him do some writing on the book. It was really fun. Such great success on on The Office, and I would th and what a cast, and what, and what what a learning experience as well. It, it's it, it's crazy to say it was just a dream come true as a struggling actor. When I go into my struggles as an actor for so many years, I'd been a professional actor for 15 like years before I booked The Office. And uh, it's just a dream job, you know, um, just a great group of people and uh, incredible writing and um, nine years of steady work. It was just fantastic. Oh, my goodness. And we haven't even gotten to Soul Pancake no. uh, yet. And, yep. and hello, viral kid president. Yes. And the success of all of that. That's right. But I want to talk um, and end here on, on your faith mm. and whether you think sometimes rain things are just meant to be that the journey is what it is because you believe it to be that's a good question um, I think yeah there's I think when you look writing a book gave me an opportunity to look back on my life and kind of like a jigsaw puzzle kind of fit all the puzzle pieces together and it definitely feels like it all made sense and it all had a reason and it all had a purpose 
and my faith. I'm a member of the Baha'i faith, and that played a significant part in me kind of finding myself and putting all the pieces together. Well, we're glad that you found yourself here in this studio this yeah, morning. Yeah, nice. Real, I like did, how you tied like that, that together. It's part of my job. We do yeah, this as morning yeah. hosts. We kind of have to do segues. You found your way here in Toronto. It's Listen, so nice being with you. What a pleasure to meet you. Nice talking Thank to you. Thank you so much. All right.